Welcome to this Ready to Craft. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fortune teller's crystal ball using ReadyBoard. We're going to begin our project with an acrylic light cover. You should be able to find these at most hardware stores. I've applied a glossy clear coat to the outside of this because I wanted the ball to be shiny. Now I'm going to determine how large I would like my faux wood base to be. I personally chose 8 inches by 8 inches. I'm going to have to create a circle in the center of this piece. I'll measure and mark my center lines. Then I'll use a compass to create my circle. Double check your measurements. You can see I didn't have it quite right here. You may need to adjust your measurements to accommodate for any lip on the light cover. First, I'm going to cut my board in half. Then, cut out the half circles. Continue to trim away any excess until the two pieces can meet perfectly in the center. To begin working on our sides, I've already cut a 3 inch wide strip of foam board. Because I want the base of the crystal ball to be larger, I'm going to add 2 inches to my measurement. The top portions will match the piece that we cut earlier. So the pieces will meet up like this. First, I'll cut 10 inch long strips. Then I'll measure and mark the top portions. And cut away the excess. Because of the thickness of the foam board, the two pieces won't meet perfectly unless you do a little trimming. So we're going to cut the edges at an approximately 45 degree angle. The way I do this is to line up my ruler about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Then hold my hobby knife at an angle while I cut. This removes a little triangle piece of foam and gives me a nice angled edge. Now when the two pieces meet up, they sit against each other perfectly. Because these pieces will touch the table at an angle, we're going to need to bevel the bottom edge as well. I don't need to take quite as much off as I did before, so I will position my ruler a little closer to the edge. I've gotten the top piece of my stand to fit perfectly with my light cover. Mm -hmm. 
taking a smaller square of foam board, I'm going to create another piece that will attach these two halves together. This won't be seen, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Don't divide this piece in half. Instead, cut the circle out from the center. Now that all the pieces of the stand are cut and ready, we can begin painting. I'm going to start with a coarse paintbrush and a dark brown acrylic paint. I'm going to use the paintbrush to add some base lines. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I got this wood look. Instead, I'll post a couple links to some great tutorials. Let those dry before moving on. To create some interesting distressing, I'm going to use the outside casing of a pen. You can use whatever you have laying around. Once again, check the links for a more detailed tutorial on how to create a full wood look. Make sure to get the edges of your project. I'm going to let that dry and apply a second coat. While that's drying, I'm going to create a plug for the bottom of my light fixture. I just found a circular object that's about the same size. It's a little big, so I'm going to use some sandpaper to refine the shape. When you're sanding foam board, make sure to wear a mask. You don't want to inhale that dust. Now I'm going to create a little notch for the cord to come out. Now that my pieces are dry, we can begin assembling them. 
I'm using this L-shaped ruler to help make sure my corners are perfect. While I let that glue set, I'm going to begin creating my crystal ball. I have a battery powered string of LED lights and this really pretty iridescent gift wrapping. I'm going to use pieces of torn up batting to soften the lights as well. Do little light checks while you work. I wasn't exactly happy how it began, so I tried some other combinations. Once it's filled, you can worry about your plug. I'm going to add some of this iridescent wrapping paper to the back of my plug. This way, it will help reflect light back into the crystal ball. I'm using rubber cement for this, but you could use a different type of adhesive. Once it's attached, I'll trim away the excess. Then finally put it into place. I'm just going to use masking tape to hold it in. This way, in case I need to make repairs later, it won't be too hard. Now we're going to assemble the top piece. I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold these pieces together. Then I will attach my brace piece with a generous amount of white glue. I allowed this to dry overnight. To attach this top part, I'm first only going to apply a little bit of glue to each of the four corners. This is because I don't want a lot of glue oozing out from the edges. Make sure that glue is set before handling any further. You don't want to mess up your positioning. Now that all the glue is cooled, we're going to flip the project over. I'm going to run a thick line of glue against all of these seams. This will help hold the edges in place, but I don't have to worry about hot glue on the outside of my project. Finally, I'm going to cover the ball part of my project. This will just protect it while I apply a clear coat to the base of the project. And there you have it. 
in your future I see a fun foam board craft project. If you try this craft out, we'd love to see it. Our social media links can be found in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If there's a foam board craft that you would like to see a ready to craft of, let us know in the comments.